Hello and welcome back to Measure Theory. As always, I want to thank all the nice people on Steady for supporting this channel. This video here is an addition to the last video and about the proof of the substitution rule. In a rough way, we can say that the substitution rule describes the transformation of an integration between two measure spaces. The important ingredient is therefore a measurable map between x and y, which are our measure spaces. In this case, x carries our measure mu and y the corresponding image measure. And with this we have considered a measurable function defined on y and called g, so with values in r, which should also be integrable with respect to our image measure here. And with this we have the following substitution formula. It tells us that instead of calculating the integral of g, we can integrate the function g circle h over the measure space x. The formula always holds if you know that one of the two integrals here exists. And that's the whole thing we want to prove now. Let's start with a simple case for such a function g, namely a characteristic function. Of course our function g should be measurable and therefore we take an element c from the sigma algebra. And now for this easy case we can calculate both sides of our formula here. On the left hand side we have the integration of chi c over y. However the integration of a characteristic function is always the measure of the corresponding set. And of course here we have the image measure h star mu. And now when you remember the definition of the image measure, you see this is measured in mu, exactly the pre-image of c using h. Okay, so this was the left hand side and now let's look at the right hand side. Here we have the integral with respect to x of the composition. Now because we have a composition, it may be easier to use a variable name. Of course we use the lowercase x and there we have our integral. At this point it's a good thing to note what this characteristic function really is. Of course we know that we only have the values 1 and 0. And we also know that this is only 1 in the case that hx lies in the set c. But of course we can rewrite this such that x lies in the pre-image of c. This is exactly the same. And the same here for 0 is not in the pre-image of c. This is very helpful because we see this is again a characteristic function using the pre-image. Or in other words, here we have the integral of the characteristic function chi where we here have the pre-image of c, the mu. However, now you see this is exactly again the measure of this set. To put this in other words, you see the left hand side is equal to the right hand side for this simple case of an easy function g. Now we have proven the substitution rule for characteristic functions. And in the second case, we go over to simple functions. This means that our function g is now a linear combination of characteristic functions. Hence we can write it as a sum i1 till n where we have coefficients lambda i and u sets ci. Okay, so in this case you may immediately see that we can just use the first case and the linearity of the integral. However, for the sake of completeness, let's write that down. So this is the left hand side, so we can pull out the whole sum and also the coefficients lambda i. This is just the linearity of the Lebesgue integral. And for this integral here, we can just use our first case 1. This means that we have here the integration over x and the characteristic function composition with h, so h x and then the mu x. And of course now we want to push the sum inside the integral again. 
And here I want to use parenthesis and say, okay, we put in h of x and here we have the mu x. However, now you see this is exactly our right hand side because this is just g, our simple function and the composition with h over x and the measure mu. And of course, on the left hand side, we started with the function g. And with this, we have proven the substitution rule for all simple functions. Obviously, we want to generalize that even more and just use a measurable function g. However, it's easier to write it down first for non-negative functions. At this point, please recall the definition of the Lebesgue integral, which just needs simple functions. The integral of the function g is just given by the supremum of the integrals of some chosen simple functions. Maybe here it's helpful to denote the simple functions by s tilde. Hence we write down s tilde is a non-negative simple function and it should lie pointwisely below our function g. Okay, here please recognize the definition of the Lebesgue integral. And now I want to look at the last part here. This just means for all y in y we have s tilde y is less or equal than gy. However, because we have here the image measure, we can weaken that a little bit. Instead of y, we can just write the image of x under h. However, this is then equivalent to saying that for all x in capital X, we have s tilde of hx is less or equal to g of hx. This means that on the right hand side we have the function g circle h at the point x. And on the left hand side we have the function s tilde composition with h. And now please recall the beginning of this video. We have shown that this is again a simple function but now on the set x. And with this we have indeed gained something. We still have the supremum here, but inside we know that the substitution rule holds for simple functions. Which means we have now the integration over x and here s tilde composition with h d mu. And behind we can now write s tilde composition with h less or equal than g composition with h. And now we can rewrite this because we know this is just a simple function on x. Hence we could call this new simple function just s. You see this looks shorter and is easier because now we look at simple functions on the set x. However, please note that we now look at all the simple functions on x, not just the ones that look like this composition here. However, we don't change the supremum by adding the simple functions that are not given by this composition here. This is not hard to show, but I will skip this here now. Using this, we are indeed finished here, because what you see here is just the definition of the integral of the function g composition with h. And now you see our substitution rule is also fulfilled for such measurable functions because the left hand side here is equal to the right hand side here. What you also see is if you have an arbitrary measurable function g, then you can split it up into a positive and a negative part and then use the substitution rule here for both parts. And then we have our result if one integral exists also the other one exists. Okay, I think that's good enough for today. I hope that helped you a little bit. And then see you next time. Bye.